Hi folks, welcome back to the B29 restoration project. Uh, not a whole lot of videos here lately, uh, just because it's really just a lot of kind of rinse and repeat of doing the same thing over and over again. Um, probably one of the previous videos, or maybe this video, I don't know. Uh, fuselage is pretty much mostly all sanded. I've still got the the bottom of the nacelles, bottom of the wing, and a couple of a little spot, a couple of spots from basically here from this line back to the trailing edge of the wing that need to get sanded down on the bottom before the bottom's ready for paint. Um, I, in my haste, I forgot to get the hatch here at the top situated to where it matches the rest of the fuselage. Now that there's a a decent amount of bondo and reshaping up here for that new nose. I did that earlier today. Um, it's really not, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. I really don't see much reason for taking this hatch off. So I may uh, just make it just cover over it and not even cut it out. I don't know yet. I haven't got that far yet. Um, to do this, to reshape it after sanding everywhere around it smooth, I just put two layers of wide masking tape and reshaped it with some Bondo and then went back and, and got it uh, covered in primer really well. Uh, rest of the fuselage, wing center section, it's all painted. Um, everything here on the leading edge where bare metal will be, bare metal will be, that's all been sanded back smooth to 320. Uh, this is just a single stage metallic silver. It's not the, the smoothest, I mean, you can see here in the glare, there's a little bit of a texture to it. I actually kind of like the texture for some reason, so I'm not going to do anything as far as sanding this down. And then everywhere here on the back of the of the tail section from basically the paint all the way back except for pretty much the the ball turret area everything back there that's getting covered in the bare metal vinyl is all done see here we got that side and then over here is also done so it's about three days of work and four rolls of vinyl so about 60 square feet of vinyl to do the whole tail section and now I'm working on laying out panel lines here on the nose so I can get that ready uh, I did have to do a little bit of like I said I had to do the body work to get this hatch fit and then the nose section itself there was a not a significant amount of body work to be done but there was definitely some sanding that needed to be done and it really I got a coat of just rattle cam primer put on it and you can still see the scratches in there so like it, it's probably gonna need at least another coat of coat of primer clean up a little bit some of the the dust on the inside sand it down to 320 and then that will be ready for vinyl um, before I can I'm thinking before I do the vinyl on this especially around the the window openings because it's just it's so floppy I will get the vacuum form tooling for it, the nose and I may print a piece of tooling for up here and just vacuum form that whole thing just to give a little bit of extra strength. But I need to get that stuff going. If I do end up 3D printing the vacuum form tool for up here, I got to 3D print it and get that smooth. So I need to do that. That way I can find someone who can vacuum form that and uh, get that on its way to me. Uh, but like I said, working on getting panel lines laid out right now. Things you need. A three view. This is not the greatest three view. It's close enough. Um, I'm going more for a, a standoff scale because the airplane is not really scale. It's standoff for sure. So I'm not really going for perfection. And I'm doing a lot of um, a lot of rounding to make my my life easier. But you need a three view. I personally like rulers, a flexible 12 inch ruler with tenths of an inch. This has, I believe, 32nd, 64th tenths and hundreds on it um, I've got that uh, pencil and a laser level I've got a Bosch one honestly I don't really like it all that much it was on sale at Lowe's a few years back for like $75 but you can see it kind of gives you put it over here you can see it gives you a crosshair on the wall and it self levels it's nice in that regard but sometimes it's nice to have a level that you can kind of twist 
to adjust it. In this instance, you got to make sure the, the fuselage is level in order to get a level line, but it works. And this is locally pretty, pretty straight across the top, so I just make sure I have a straight line across it. Uh, first couple of things I typically do is you can see here very, very lightly, it's pencil line that goes all the way down. This panel line here is lined up with the panel line here. And this top panel line is lined up with this one that you can see there. Pretty much just, I make marks that I use a ruler and I draw all the way around it. Um, I'm gonna stop. I can't do a whole lot to the nose because like I said, the, it just got a coat of primer. So it's kind of still wet and a little soft and I gotta do a little bit more sanding to it. But you can see here on the front of this three view, these panel lines actually they taper as they get closer to the to the forward dome of the nose. So that's going to be a thing where probably I'll have to make a mark here and then at the end, and then I'll use a, a ruler along the the curvature of the the nose to get that curve. And then once we get the uh, once all the panel lines are more or less drawn where they go then we can go about getting the metal panels on which i'll save that for a, another video because that's a that's a process in and of itself it's not a hard one it's just time consuming so like i said laser level ideally you don't have to have it but it definitely helps if you have a tripod you can put that laser level on that's really nice too because then you can adjust the height and the twist and whatnot without having to find stuff to block it up on my tripod some somehow disappeared. I guess my my wife or my kids took it. Um, but I've got most of the stuff I need already. And the second hardest thing about panel lines, well, the first hardest thing is just getting the, the motivation to do it because they take a while. Uh, the second hardest one is on round stuff, making sure they're lined up side to side. So, like I have, I think I've said it in a video that I probably haven't put on the internet yet. I like to find a, a common reference point before I, for all my measurements. In this instance, I'm using the separation between the painted area and then the bare metal. So, reference point here, forward, reference point for that one, backwards. And then this line here is almost a horizontal reference line. It actually, it's it changes dimension a little bit it's about a quarter of an inch narrower here than it is back here so this one i may end up moving down or i may move this one up it's most likely that either this one or this one is what's slightly off see that's 5.1 yeah and there's 4.9 so yeah this one's a little coming down a little bit which throws this one off so i can adjust those later um, and then there is a, a center line drawn down the center of the whole airplane. So I do have a couple of marks here, one here and one here. This is for vertical lines. There's also another mark here at the top. This is about 12 inches, I believe, maybe 11 and a half from this reference line here forward. And another one to the next panel line forwards, nine and a half inches. I need to make that mark here across the top and also need to put that center line down the middle of this hatch. The primer on this hatch is still just a little soft so I'm going real light with that mark. There we go. And now what I'll do is I'll get my laser level and I'll use that to make a line, a vertical line for that forward panel. If I can find what I did with it since I misplaced it. Oh, here it is. And I'm gonna put this fairly far away from the airplane, that way I get a reasonably narrow line. 
and then you want to try and make it hit the hit the mark so here the mark is pretty much right in the middle of the pencil and my line is about a quarter of an inch further forward so I'm just gonna move the laser level accordingly until I get it to where I want it and now it's just slightly in front of it this is where having multiple at least two people would come in handy let's see yeah it's still about a quarter inch in front of it now ideally once you get it in the right position it will hopefully wrap around on the other side to where that same position is yeah there we go that's pretty close and then I'm just gonna come around here and make lots of little dash marks 